Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Do not prostitute thy daughter, meaning don't dress your daughter in a certain way. Read. To cause her. Stop, stop. To what? To cause her. To cause. To cause her. Meaning, so there's a repercussion after you dress a certain way. To cause her, read, to be a whore. So she didn't start out like a hoe. Like a lot of our sisters don't think or start out in their mind thinking that they hoes. They don't go out there saying, I'm going to be a hoe. Initially, right? But over time, your clothing is going to put a different spirit on you. We're looking at all our afflictions, right? Our kids get gunned down in the street, right? Our kids are winded up in prisons, right? We hid in prison houses, why? Because of sin. Some of us are murderers. Are we supposed to murder? No. Some of us are thieves. Are we supposed to steal? No, right? Some of us are supposed to be raised in righteous households dealing with our women uprightly. Not making baby mamas. We're supposed to be having wives, right? And we're supposed to be building communities, establishing uh, a community, a nation of people. Things that we can pass on to our children, right? We're supposed to be building prosperous lives for them. God said he would bless us for that if we kept his commandments. But if we broke them, you were going to suffer slavery by the hands of another nation. Read on. All thy trees and fruit of thy land. Verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. So he says, therefore, therefore, you shall serve your enemies because you decided to break my law. You know what a commandment is? What is it? It's a, what? It's a law, right? When somebody says, I command you to do something, today they call it a mandate, right? It's an order. So to keep it in layman terms, God has rules. He created this world, he created the sun, the moon, and the stars, right? And then he created nations of people to govern the other creations that he created. Remember, he said, I give man dominion over all the fishes and the seas and the, the beasts and everything of the earth, right? So God made us stewards of his planet. Now watch this. I'm going to finish up. Read. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So God says, because you didn't want to keep my commandments, therefore, meaning in result, you're going to serve your enemies. So you already identified who did this to us, white people, right? So God calls them our enemies. Friends didn't do this to us. An enemy is going to teach us a religion or a God that looks like him. But I can show you in this book that God looked like us. God is the creator of all things, right? And he said, let us create man in our image. So what, did, what material did he use to create man? What material? The dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground, sis? It's brown, just like you. So the image of God is a brown or a dark skin, just like the Hebrews, who is called his firstborn. So read verse 48 again. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So God sent the white man against the Negroes. Do you understand? Yes. Why? Because we broke his commandments. And we continue to break his commandments. That's why we continue in affliction. That's why we continue in tribulation. That's why we're still fighting for peace. That's why we're still marching for justice. Because we have been cursed from God for breaking his commandments. But God will redeem us if we repent, which is why Christ came in the faith of him, his black son. He came to redeem us from those curses. But we must turn back to God's commandments under the faith of Christ, the black Messiah. Not white Jesus. Not what your enemy gave you, your oppressor gave you. Okay, that fills your neighborhoods with alcohol, that fills your neighborhoods with guns, that fills your ears with rap music. You understand? They filled your neighborhoods with liquor stores. Okay, 
And if they want to give you a job, they say, come work at my Foot Locker. Come sweep my floors. Come mop my floors. That's what they say. Come take out my trash. Come ring my money up. But we don't have jobs or they don't give us things that produce or to rebuild our nation, to rebuild our communities that we may thrive. Why? Because they brought us here for them to thrive. They brought us here to serve. You understand? And we will continue to serve until we keep God's commandments and the faith of his son, Jesus the Christ. Read on. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. And so for everything, for food, right? We have to serve the white man. Meaning of what? In slavery, how did, we, how did we get our food? We stole it. We, sometimes we did steal it, right? But, who, but when we didn't steal, how did we eat? Did we own land? No, right? So how did we eat? Did we own reservoirs? Huh? Well, you can't work if you don't eat, right? And whose workers were we? So they had to make sure we ate in order for us to work, right? So how did we eat? No, but how did we get it? They're from them. From them. Read that part again. In hunger. So we had to serve them for food. That was the only way we was going to eat. We had to work. Right? Read. And in thirst. If we wanted water, we had to work. Sometimes we had to, a lot, all the time, really, we had to bring in a certain weight in order to earn your meal. Or you had to stay your behind out there working. Right? So we served them for our basic necessities. Right? Come on. And in nakedness. In our clothing. We weren't producing that for ourselves. So guess what? Our master had to provide that for us. Right? Even today, how as a nation of people do we provide resources for each other? Meaning what? Is there thousands or, yes, are there thousands of lands that's dedicated to the so-called Negro or Hispanic for him to, as a resource, to plant and to put in a grocery store to provide for that nation of people? It's not. So who do we get it from? Another man. Another race. Right? Even our clothing. If you was to look at your tag on the back of your shirt, what would it say? Made in China. Another race clothes you. You don't clothe you. And that's to our shame. But that is a curse. Because these are basic necessities. Because you already know, if I'm going to walk out the house, I got to have clothes on. That's a basic necessity. If I'm going to have children, I got to feed them. That's a basic necessity. I need shelter, right? That's a basic necessity. You understand those things, so you go to work. But as a nation of people, we, those basic necessities, we're supposed to be able to provide that for ourselves. But we don't. So we depend on another man or another nation to provide it for us. That's to our shame. That is a curse. You understand? That is a plague from God. Read on. And in want of all things. So anything that we want, if we want a job, we want a car, a driver's license, right? We want anything. We have to serve that master. Watch this. Read. And he, and he, that same enemy that we have to serve for all things, come on, shall put a yoke of horn upon thy neck. A yoke of what? A yoke of horn. A yoke of iron, come on, upon thy neck. Read. Until he have destroyed thee. Look at this sign, sis. It says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. This is that dark race of the Hebrews that whose forefather is not Ham but Shem. We are Shemitic. You are an Israelite. This book is black people's book. This is your book. Because a lot of us don't know our history beyond slavery. This is it right here. They kept your records. That's the Bible. They stole your records and they made it unlawful for you to read and write so that you couldn't read the stuff for yourself. And then they reintroduced your records to you and said, oh yeah, you know that, that Moses person that you really like, that you honor and re respect and reverence? Guess what? He looked like me. He looked like me now. So guess what you want? You want some deliverance? You got to come to me now. 
You got to come to me. So that's why black people worship a white Jesus. That's why we think God is white. That's why we think our savior is white. That's why we go to the democratic office and we look for them. They're the fathers of the politics. Give me Lamentations 2.15. Lamentations chapter 2 verse 15. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head. All the nations that pass by us. You ever see white people when you're walking down downtown or something? Or you, and you, they see like a group of black kids and they, you know, they having fun and whatnot. But they a little bit unruly. And what they do, they... Pull your pants up. Why your hair so blind? We're a reproach. They laugh and they hiss at us. You don't think... When they show our people live on TV twerking, you think they, and they're, la they're literally laughing at you in your face. They say, look at this people. They laugh and they hiss at us. Come on. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem. They shake their heads every time they come by like, niggas. Because we are a destroyed people. Come on. Is this saying, is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty? Is this the people of God? Those are the Israelites? Those are the people that God chose to be the rulers of all this earth? These niggas right here? That's what they say. The elites of them. Because they know who you are. They have records of all nations. They know who they stole from Africa. Come on. The joy of the whole earth? All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They all have opened their mouths against us. They called us niggas. Porch monkeys, jigaboos, gator bait, okay, wetbacks. They, they all have reproached against us. Give me chapter 4, verse 17. That's what I wanted. One more thing. Hold that. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. So remember, I told you we go through all of this stuff because we break God's commandments, right? I'm going to show you one thing that you can apply today, okay? I'm going to show you one thing that you can apply today in your repentance, okay? You believe in God, right? Yes? You believe you're an Israelite? Because you're not black. You're not an African-American. You're an Israelite. Okay? That's who you are. That's who we be. And we were made slaves here in America for breaking God's laws. But God is going to redeem us out of here. Just like he redeemed us out of Egypt. And serving hard bondage. And he used Moses and his brother. Right? To deliver us and the other elders. He's going to deliver us out of America too. But this is what you have to do. Watch this. Read this. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What's a woman's garment? What's that? What's women's clothes? Like what? Clothes you have on? That's women's clothes? Okay. Let me ask you this. You ever seen a man wearing a dress before? How'd that look to you? It look weird, right? Why? No, to what? So, uh, who is it meant for? A woman. So a woman's garment would be something like a dress, right? Like a skirt. That's all That's all called cross-dressing. You know what we used to call them back in the day? I'm sure you heard of it. You're not thinking about it right now. A transvestite. Those were the old school trainees. Before they were able to change their sex today. Now they're able to change their sex and we call them trannies. But back then we called them transvestites because they changed or they trans their vesture, their clothing. They became cross dressers. God said that's a sin not to do that. So watch this. Read that from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So if a man cannot wear a dress or a skirt, what should a woman not wear? You know it. That's what the Bible says, sister. You can't wear pants. Now, guess I already know what you're gonna say. But these women pants. Not these women pants, but you know, these people. No one of these men wanna walk around in a dress. But this is the thing, sister. This is the thing. This is the thing. Watch this. Get me Leviticus 19 and 29. No women these days wanna walk around in a skirt or a dress, right? That's what you said. And I'm gonna show you. I'm going to show you why that is. I'm going to show you why that is. But this is why it's necessary for you to walk around in a dress or a skirt. You ever seen, before I say that, read this. 
Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. So the Bible says, excuse me, not to prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. What's a dress code of a prostitute? You think they don't have a problem? You don't think they have a, a, a dress code? You ever seen you ever seen a movie Players Club? How they dress? Do our sisters dress like that today? So, and what were they? They weren't regular women. What did they do for a living? They was prostitutes. They were dancers, right? They worked at a uh, what they call it strip club, right? So strippers or prostitutes have a dress code. There is something when you see them, they do dress a certain way, so you know what they are. So you see, that's not like that now. You sure? Right. But why? Why? Why do they dress like that? To attract men. That's what it is, to attract men. Watch what the Bible says. Proverbs chapter 7 and Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Meaning, don't dress your daughter in a certain way. Read. To cause her. Stop. Stop. To what? To cause her. To cause. To cause her. Meaning, so there's a repercussion after you dress a certain way. To cause her. Read. To be a whore. So she didn't start out like a hoe. Like a lot of our sisters don't think or start out in their mind thinking that they hoes. They don't go out there saying, I'm going to be a hoe. Initially. Right? But over time, your clothing is going to put a different spirit on you. Why do you think that those trannies back then, that tra those transvestites, why do you think they put on the clothing or apparel of a, of a woman? Because... They wanted to be like women. They wanted to be like that. So just like our sisters dress in a certain way today, they they give off the they they dress the thing or the attributes that they are or what the, the men that trying to attract. So it says, don't prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. Why? Read. Lest. The lest. So here's gonna be the end result when it does it. Because it only takes one person, one bad apple for everything else to become right. Because if you do it, and then you show me that it's okay, guess what your daughter's gonna do? Oh, I wanna do that too. And guess what the other sister across the street is gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna do that too. I'm gonna dress provocative too. And then what's gonna happen when the, all these sisters today that wanna dress provocative? Read. Lest the land fall to whoredom. Lest the what? The land fall to whoredom. Lest the land fall to whoredom. You know what whoredom is? People that just want to have sex. Because you dressed sexy. You're attracting the spirit of sex, of lust. For example, all of those sisters out here that dress like that, are they virgins? Do you think most of them are virgins? <laughs> right, you already know. But this is the thing. That's whoredom. When you dress that way, you're not going to attract a man that's going to make an honest woman out of you. The first thing he's gonna see is like, damn, that ain't fat. So what you think he gonna do? Hey mama, come here. What's your name? Oh yeah, where you going? That's how he's gonna talk. You think marriage is in his mind? He said, no. Why buy the cow if I can get the milk for free? Let me try that, she look good. So don't dress, don't prostitute your daughter or yourselves because you're gonna cause other men to look at you and you're going to fall to whoredom. Whoredom. Now we have a nation filled with what? Baby mamas and baby daddies. Family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is unity.